स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो ऑल वेलकम बैक टू आर कोर्स ऑन प्रसिशन ऑनकोलॉजी वी हैव डल्ट सेवरल टॉपिक्स ऑन मेनी एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ बेसिक्स ऑफ कैंसर टू कैंसर डिटेक्शन मेथड्स इम्यूनोथेरेपी वी वी वेन स्टडी इन डिटेल व्हाट एग्जैक्टली द कार्ट थेरेपी नाउ व्हाट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द होल लर्निंग मेनी एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ प्रसिशन ऑनकोलॉजी तो नाउ वी विल रियली हैव एन होलिस्टिक अप्रोच टूवर्ड्स कैंसर बायोलॉजी टूवर्ड्स द डायग्नोस्टिक प्रोसीजर्स एंड टूवर्ड्स द ट्रीटमेंट स्ट्रेटजीज now uh, we are going to come introduce to a uh, very uh, different different term precision medicine or precision and personalized medicine it is more of uh, personalized strategies personalized targeted therapy personalized treatment strategies all this are are more or less uh, uh, similar uh, strategies now uh, so we have no how does this work out in uh, cancer we are all very aware that uh, uh, tumors have uh, different underlying uh, uh, genetic causes and uh, may express different proteins in one person uh, versus another this is completely all agreed because we've been talking about for this several several uh, sessions we we check if a diagnostic marker is positive what do we call them if a diagnostic mar marker is not absent we call them uh, mutated now uh, if you are uh, uh, if you are really really like to know for a precision oncology or a targeted therapy it is important to really have the concept that tumors are uh, each tumor within the tumor per se it's also entirely different you the cancer has an inheritable uh, uh, variability so this is totally this particular uh, precision and personalized medicine uh, uh, cancer biology is, itself is a very big vast oceans they there is like to there are many efforts going to acquire your uh, ppm data in order to characterize molecular differences uh, between tumors the, yes it is very important to give a, a why is it so important because you are going to stratify patients based on their typical diagnostic marker there it could uh, uh, it is very very apparent very several proved that suppose you have your precision and personalized medicine cancer treatment it can result in a very uh, better uh, treatment outcome which could benefit the com uh, company of course and all the treatment strategies are very well governed by many regulatory agencies and uh, however uh, your uh, uh, if this ppm per personalized and pre pre medicine has to be addressed per se it has to be part of your uh, healthcare and insurance policies and which should be become your uh, part of the can standard cancer supposing a cart therapy do you think it would be really affordable in an in scenario like an in india it may not be yes but still if you have a proper healthcare and insurance for properties so now for example a leukemia patient comes we are going to give them a cart therapy yes this could be a standard cancer treatment regimens which will which should be inculcated in your regular uh, cancer care protocols so coming back to a regular uh, story which we have already dealt this in uh, detail so if you go back you know uh, we know that there is a passenger genes there is a driver genes we know that driver gene per se is whatever it's exactly uh, drives the gene uh, drives the, the gene which is responsible for the uh, process of carcinogen for example uh, if you have an initial cell with normal cell with very few mutations then uh, some intrinsic passenger mutations are acquired during uh, normal cell division by intrinsic mutation process some very small mutations but they could be eliminated they will be eliminated by the process of uh, during the as the growth then however you will be the, during childhood and adult uh, you will be having several environmental for example uh, the pollution or sometimes the la lifestyle exposures like as i said the asbestos uh, workers uh, which may which make uh, this passenger mutations 
then slowly you you even have some driver mutations which will cause early clonal expansions where this is like unlike before the acquisition of a driver mutation is uh, able to cause a clonal you have some driver mutation maybe continued exposure to the particular carcinogen or whatever any genetic factor any muta mutagens all that you will have as such there is a typical uh, uh, cancer uh, coming up now slowly we will get this is the typical story wow we you know why am i talking about passenger and driver uh, um, abnormalities here because this particular gene the driver genes could be your diagnostic biomarkers whatever the gene which is responsible the mutation gene which could be responsible here so yes if i can really target uh, look at this gene for during my diagnosis maybe from like as i mentioned your ffp block or your blood or your cell free dna or ct dna if we can, uh, we can look for this presence of this dna then yes we can really have a typical diagnostic marker then comes your uh, slowly now we, i will uh, slowly sh shift uh, uh, gears here here it is like uh, now uh, we have introduced to something what exactly is your uh, ppms and then slowly we are going towards your driver's uh, mutation now we know clearly what exactly so we have identified a driver mutation could be responsible for your clonal expansion for your tumor uh, this thing for the process presence of tumor now coming to your uh, uh, field uh, cancerization isn't it isn't it like you know a very fantastic term which is like you know it denotes a large variety of your regional changes on the surface of tissues it was first uh, observed in 1953 by slaughter et al where they proposed that the uh, field of cancerization in order to explain the, the statistical enrichment of the multifocal rather than isolated oral squamous cell carcinomas as they found it in 783 Uh, patients with cancer they really they were not there are only some multiple force for then this is totally highly localized what did they hypothesize these patches are microscopically definitely abnormal but the the histological nature uh, defines that they are benign and the tissue surrounding the tumor suffered from the preconditioning of an area of epithelial uh, of uh, epithelium to cancer growth by carcinogenic agent you can clearly see it in the histopathology this pathological evaluation of this uh, uh, shows uh, has revealed that there is hyperplastic and uh, di uh, dysplastic changes there are pre malignant changes found in the uh, areas of uh, carcinogen uh, epithelium adjacent to the tumors and these uh, and these are termed as field ca cancerization and this that these multiple foci of pre malignancy could progress concurrently to form multiple primary uh, cancers you have a normal cell then you have a cancerized cell and then you have the malignant uh, see again see how this is like isn't it two fantastic terms you have something called field cancerization and then initiation of the cancerized field so to understand where does that initiation for this cancerized field happen it is again like for the mutagenic insult which i was uh, to, uh, showing uh, uh, talking about in my earlier slide so for example in the lung you know especially in the bronchial uh, epithelium so it is this is again your uh, perfect example for a field characterization where uh, because uh, suppose either it could be a genetic uh, uh, background or with like uh, or maybe a uh, Uh, uh exposure to smoke or to a potent uh, carcinogen in the environment it could uh, trigger that this you uh, suppose a sporadic lesion uh, a tumor uh, does not share its tumorigenic mutation with the surrounding stream this is where whereas a tu tumor growing in a cancerized field uh, is the one that began from a malignant cell that initially shared your tumorigenic mutations and uh, altered phenotype with your uh, it has an altered phen phenotype from the surrounding can you see how the phenotype is altered here it's is in same whereas it slowly it is you are having your uh, cancerized uh, cell 
the because the malignancy evolved because of an additional further mutation further uh, change uh, exposure to your carcinogen so what happens uh, because the whole uh, cancer promoting microenvironment changes so it is it favors the tumor growth in that the uh, uh, the the cells harboring tumoric mutations may appear completely abnormal morphologically like such as dysplastic but the in the, but the cells in, in the cancerized field they will have an altered uh, uh, phenotype that is first thing they will have increased survival uh, survival uh, and, uh, so uh, per se a cancerized field may be independently initiated by many cells following a mutagenic insult please use a very wonderful term here mutagenic insult such uh, uh, insult may result to the consequences of your uh, DNA damage or by ultra radiation damage or it, how will this insult occur? We have seen, right? We have micro, for example, your cigarette smoke. So, these initiated cells may even could be small in number, maybe even in, it depends well. And, but they will uh, clonal, clonally expand to create a contagious patch of your cancer prime cells like this. Now, from this stage, if you remember in my earlier lectures, I was mentioning that to grow from this stage to this stage, it may take, it may vary from, uh, for example, one year to five years or even 10 years or from at this stage also, if you remember, if our uh, other uh, repair mechanisms or whatever, they are all uh, in the functional way, they all will be uh, very well. This, uh, this is a bit reversible. This is the replacement of the normal cell population by a cancer prime cell population that may show no morphological change. But it is now recognized it could be field cancerization is a prelude to uh, to the development of your uh, cancer. For example, many cancers such as your lung, colon, screen. They uh, usually uh, mutations naturally occur and they are... Uh, uh, clonally expand in aging tissues, but only some very few of these mutations, uh, they increase the risk of for cancer development. A cancerized lineage is one that has acquired, but does not, but not all the phenotypic tra uh, treatments required for malignancy is present. This uh, cancerized lineage will have a survival or growth advantage over normal cells, but is incapable of grow, growing into a tumor. So, this is all like how this uh, completely this normal cell from a complete cell. Supposing if you take any of your FFP or uh, your biopsy tissue or you test this particular uh, cancerized lineage cells on a histopathologic scale, yes, they could be, there are DNA changes. Yes, they could be morphological changes. They could be, uh, they and they could be even releasing certain metabolites into the uh, their environment. Yes, for example, the oral ones, the saliva, you will have certain biomarkers which are released into the saliva. Then that, you know, you, at this stage, yes, it is a typically you can detect your, the detect the early prediction for cancer. One more uh, term which we are using here is uh, lateral cancerization, which is uh, used to indicate the lateral spread of tumors. Because of the progressive transformation of the cells adjacent to your tumors rather than spread in discussion of uh, spread in uh, disrupting the uh, epithelium uh, by pre existing cancer cells. This is exactly uh, how it comes, you know, you have a different, you have the normal, uh, normal uh, fa extrogenous factors which will cause for the clonal expansion. This is again uh, very quickly I am talking about free field uh, cancerization in a skin model where you have uh, two paths for your UV, uh, UV induced squamous cell uh, carcinoma. Here the first one is like uh, it is like uh, you have this uh, exposure to UV can lead to cancer causing mutations and base in the basal uh, keratinocytes. Agreed, right? You have the uh, TP53, we have discussed this, which are commonly seen in the precancerous um, pre keratinocytes uh, derived uh, uh, lesions, the, which are like called your uh, uh, actinic uh, keratosis, AKs. So, with additional mutations again in your genes such as the notch, you know, this can progress to your uh, squamous cell carcinoma. So, one, this is how exactly one, one mutation, a small hyperplasia and then you have your uh, 
neoplastic uh, squamous cell carcinoma cells. Now, what is the second pathway it was proposed which can you uh, where the UV can directly induce your notch pathway in your dermal fibroblast here. This, uh, this leads uh, the cells to acquire a uh, cancer associated uh, fibroblast like shape. That means they become activated. You have the activated CAFs. What will they do? They will release certain factors and high fibroblast growth factors. Then they release a lot of extracellular ma uh, ma proteins and proteases. This results in the increase in the uh, pro proliferation of the uh, overlying epidermal keratinocytes. See how this increase is happening here. Then what will happen? Regions of this. Uh, uh, these particular regions will further uh, 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 become positive with uh, uh, CD45 uh, uh, positive inflammatory cells which will uh, which will contribute to your uh, keratinocyte uh, proliferation and the emer emergence of your uh, actinic keratosis that can progress to your uh, squamous cell carcinoma. This is again a very very typical example of your uh, field cancerization and this is how we have explained in uh, uh, skin model uh, skin of, uh, using the UV light which could be an inducer one uh, for uh, the squamous cell carcinoma. So now what are the different examples for uh, 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 of cancerization field in human tissues you have the colon, uh, uh, colon carcinoma where then you have the pre malignant uh, uh, diagnosis in the dysplasia you can clearly see uh, different in mutations you can see we can see aberrant met methylations altered proteomes and then uh, then yes it is uh, uh, resection what is the clinical uh, how do they take care of clinical resection of all the affected areas where area is necessary and then uh, and then you have the uh, gastric carcinoma where the where you clearly see uh, uh, interstitial metaplasia the, there are mutations and there is a uh, aberrant methylation yeah. so then there is uh, it occurs in interstitial uh, metaplasia and it is and has known pre malignant uh, state then you have the squamous dysplasia for your esophageal uh, squamous uh, carcinoma where it is again evident by your mutations then altered proteomics then methylations are different and then uh, it is like uh, there is a high possibility of uh, metachronous uh, lesions and then this is mostly associated with your smoking and similarly you have with the uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma which has uh, high evidence of uh, implicated with development of a ca cancerized field then with the lung you know the non squamous cell lung carcinoma where the lung adenoma you have your dysplasia with then again you have the carcinoma there is a change in the morphology of the tissues then yes a lot of mutations which we will discuss in a lot in the coming session or in some of the, this in this particular session and then uh, yes suppose if it is a lung it may not be a resection yes it is not possible because first thing uh, keep in mind here for the lung it is always uh, only only in the late stage only people uh, the patient will report to the hospital then smoking yes with can be by seen widespread and then a continuum uh, then you have the uh, non squamous cell adenocarcinoma now we are going to shift uh, talk about another uh, uh, very very important parameter which we have discussed in cancer detection methods in detail about cancer biomarkers so very quickly in only in uh, we will uh, just uh, go through the basic which is which says it is a characteristic that is measure it is a characteristic that is measures as a indicator of risk of cancer we discussed about uh, HPV uh, high risk HPV DNA for screening of cervical cancer from your cervical grapes and this characteristics of a biomolecular biomarker can be a molecular cellular physiological or image based these biomolecules are found in tissues or body fluids and they are uh, produced by cancer cells or normal cells in response to cancer cells agreed my biomarker testing in uh, cancer how do you get you first need to have profile your tumor not a or you can even you do go for your blood in case of your CD DNA or cell free DNA and then detect changes in DNA RNA proteins that info but this all this particular profiling will uh, provide information for uh, efficient cancer diagnosis prognosis and precision 
मेडिसिन और गाइडिंग जेनेटिक टेस्टिंग यस बिकॉज इफ यू मे इफ यू इन द इनहेरिट इनहेरिटेड कैंसर वी कम अक्रॉस दिस जेनेटिक टेस्टिंग विच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम योर कैंसर बायोमार्कर टेस्टिंग यूज फॉर डिटेक्टिंग जर्मलाइन जेनेटिक वेरिएशन सो नाउ कैंसर बायोमार्कर्स आर आर uh well defined they are very well used for uh, regular uh, diagnostic protocols for uh, cancer detection methods why are we talking about here to get about a perfect precision uh, oncology uh, precision diagnostics these biomarkers are the ones which are taking the lead in the diagnostics market so you have your uh, uh, based on your disease state you have the biomarkers you have the prediction biomarkers detection biomarkers diagnostic biomarkers and your uh, prognosis biomarkers and then you have the based on the biomolecules as i said dna rna your protein and your glycoproteins based on um, other criteria your imaging biomarkers very very important one pathological biomarkers and their in silico biomarkers potentially you have like you know you for this what material do you need usually the tissue biopsy tissue or then uh, the, actually and then you may need the peripheral blood or the bone marrow or the saliva or the cervical scrapes peripheral uh, blood uh, as we have very well discussed into this you know a uh, blood liquid biopsies they have been proposed as novel promising strategies for the early diagnosis of cancer and to define patient's prognosis circulating tumor dna is a fragmented released by tumors and found in the blood stream and other biological fluid, uh, fluids of cancer patients so usually if you can really take it this come uh, this particular ct dna profiling molecular profiling it can captures the entire tumor molecular profile and first thing it not only at the time of your diagnostic maybe first time patient reports but even like you know uh, you can monitor your therapeutic response maybe two months after chemotherapy or maybe after radiation yes you have definitely ct dna molecular profiling which really helps then you have the bone marrow uh, aspirations to measure your uh, mrd in chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia so despite uh, offering the advantage of providing more accurate results than your peripheral uh, blood measurements you know always uh, there is an uh, important uh, biomarkers for all this uh, is like it's a non invasive you don't need to have the a uh, clinician or you don't have to have a biopsy a pathology then uh, uh, pathologist and uh, uh, all the other paraphernalia are uh, for taking the uh, ct dna and all it's just a 2 ml blood this is like uh, um, predictive biomarkers they are referred to as your response markers they are uh, usually uh, uh, uh very well uh, utilized in assessing your effect of your uh, administering a specific uh, drug so for for example any specific drug for example in the breast cancer yes can you have predict you have the nano string signatures or the uh, b360 ma- markers but they, they can uh, this my by markers allow clinicians to select a, a set of chemotherapy agents which will work best for an individual uh patient for for example herceptin this is a very very uh, uh, important uh, agent used in breast cancer which uh, with usually it's used in uh, uh, used for uh, breast cancer lesions which are her2 new positive over expression whereas uh, uh, tamoxifen is used for other breast cancer so here itself you have you like a hgr2 positive will have uh, herceptin this thus that her2 is your predictive ca- cancer biomarker for a subset of b- breast cancer therapies uh, likewise you have your elta ernalt your uh, gefitinib for your lung cancer so now what is the predictive biomarker for them your egfr mutation status egfr wild type you give a set of drugs mutated ones this particular uh, ernalt ernalt and uh, gefitinib is given simple uh, what are exactly uh, your uh, characteristic of a bi- good biomarker you have like uh, it has to be accurate it has to be in measuringly object performance in measuringly objective it should not be like the accuracy should be in very uh, less quantities also it should be able to precise so it should be able to obtain 
So very, very important aspect for your precision oncology, precision diagnostics. Then normal when when uh, normal patient variability, when you have the change in measurements, it should be uh, able to discriminate between the pathological changes and your normal changes from one human to another human. Sample to sample variation, it should be able to differentiate. And we should be able to correlate, uh, directly uh, correlate to the dis uh, disease, to the measured effort. Then usability, ease and feasibility of um, uh, evaluation and clinical translation. Now coming to a very uh, important term in uh, precision oncology is your uh, uh, companion uh, diagnostics. This was companion diagnostic was first introduced in the late 1990s with the pivotal point being the simultaneous uh, approval of four uh, five herpsetin and its corresponding companion uh, diagnostic test uh, your uh, herpsept uh, test they uh, these companion diagnostics are nothing but they are tests and assays used to detect uh, biomarkers and specific mutations to elucidate your disease pathway you can use them to stratify patient for populations and target drug therapies that are you can identify patients that are suitable for treatment um, these cdx are in uh, in vitro diagnostic test supporting the safe and effective use of a specific product they will uh, sub, for example suppose uh, this particular companion diagnostics you know uh, apart from being uh, uh, like you know identify subpopulations of pre, uh, patients that can benefit from the treatment or not they avoid adverse if, if, uh, effects in patients which who may not be able to benefit simultaneously so that thereby you can even reduce the cost this is a typical uh, monitoring and guiding uh, diagram here where you know companion diagnostic agents can be used for diagnostics and treatment this is like the only uh, imaging fda uh, companion diagnostic uh, is tool used in fda is your ferris scan which enables your mri assessment of your iron content in the liver of patients with non uh, transfusion dependent uh, thalassemia because of this molecular imaging you know you have the different uh, different like you can you have the pet ct imaging mri you have the uh, all the different high end images based on that that yes can you share clearly yes for me your pet ct all of us are aware we can uh, really uh, go look at the tumor mass this can okay sometimes yes this uh, this pet ct is now currently being uh, used this optical imaging to predict your therapeutic efficiency this is very very companion diagnostics is a very very important in their uh, era of uh, precision uh, oncology or precision medicine here you have your uh, companion diagnostic development and then your treatment de development both of this go very well hand in hand it's not like one in uh, one is uh, independent of an other you have like supposing uh, you have the companion you have you need to identify what is your biomarker selection how is it feasibly is it feasible then you have to develop a uh, prototypes assay maybe you want to do a lateral flow assay or you want to develop a, for example your saliva or you want to develop a filter paper based assay or you want to develop a, a dna pcr assay or a lamp pcr whatever you know and then after you develop your prototype you have to do an anal analytical uh, validation clinical validation and then it has to be it is like validated companion biomarker it's this. what is happening with the treatment also yes you need to have in the can ease this is this basic approach it's a typical target uh, target selection here also for this particular target biomarker the similarly how was the response to the treatment prototype you are uh, you are having a drug a prototype which is in the drug design and drug discovery and then you have the preclinical de development where exactly you go for your mouse models or uh, whatever models animal models and then the clinical phase one clinical phase two phase uh, three and then uh, po post approval and then launch can you have if these two can really go and hand in hand so here you have to have a target validation and then identification and stratification of your markers then here or label considered based on your marker status where exactly can it have then clinical utility for the 
stratification of your marker how can it be suppose if it is hair to positive how is it or if it is negative the clinical validation for stratification marker again goes through at this phase 3 also based on this uh, uh, trial results it will be considered considered for further uh, further uh, approval or and further development as a drug for which you have your companion diagnostic marker this is very very important pipeline for uh, for uh, development of your diagnostic marker development as well as the uh, companion uh, biomarker development as well as your treatment uh, uh, drug development so one very important uh, part for a precision oncology uh, very very vital part is your molecular diagnostic which is a very uh, key component where it embodies the target and uh, rational treatment of cancer according to the specific molecular enterization which underlies in the which is specific to the particular patient as we all know that uh, cancer is a genetic disease which could be even uh, inherited or uh, acquired gene, gene aberrations. So, each cancer carries a unique set of your driver genomic aberrations that work together to promote cancer initiation and maintenance. We know this particular which we have seen in the initial style. Usually, sometimes these genomes are inherently unstable and um, many, many accumulation of more new genomic alterations can lead to the cancer progression. We have seen in detail in the basics of cancer, what are the different genomic alterations that can happen. One thing which we will stress is your single nucleotide variates, which are a class uh, uh, 6 class mutation spectrum where this particular transition has happened, where a single nucleotide CG to A to G or whatever this particular 6 classes of mutation variants are there and prov and usually uh, contributions from uh, of this each class is associated with uh, distinct exogenous carcinogens exposure. So, usually particular the CG to AT transition is uh, related to smoking in lung cancer sam samples and particular this transition is, is over represented in uh, skin cancer CG to TA is related to your uh, UV exposure. So, this is called uh, so, this you have something called every cancer or every uh, uh, cancer is, uh, has got something called a mutation signature very, very, very important. So the, there are like uh, the, the, this SNBs are have been possible classified into 96 possible combinations. As I have uh, mentioned here, you have like uh, DNA, RNA and the protein and the different analysis for individual genes, individual transcripts. This is like how your uh, uh, material starting with this is like either you have from your FFP or from your urine or the saliva whatever. Mostly the current uh, used uh, material is your FFP. Then slowly a lot of uh, approach from the self-free DNA, CT DNA is also gaining. Then you, you analyze for your uh, 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 it's a general practice where you analyze for your uh, individual scene or se set of genes. This is like you can even use your regular qPCR or a regular PCR, uh, real-time PCR here in this case. Then individual transcripts, you have a set of transcripts. Then you have a proteome where you have the MALDI top. Then this is slowly evolving. Now, instead of taking a specific genes, how about going for an exome sequencing, transcriptome sequencing, proteome. This is all totally evolving in this particular in the current areas. But then, then you have the uh, methylome here. So different as I mentioned, you have you can even have your blood, cerebrospinal fluid, or the urine. All this particular this part from this area, it requires you have need a lot of resources. It has, uh, but there is a, a lot of scope because you get a lot of. A huge amount of data from this and there is an importance of pattern you you definitely have you have more ways of more data you have more ways you can classify right you can have definite pattern recognitions here this is the uh, supposing uh, suppose how the how does it uh, 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 diagnostic tools you know they are adaptive use of during the course of your disease what happens in the patient's uh, uh, journey they start uh, for a treatment initially they start with uh, neoadjuvant uh, setting uh, with uh, before before the main uh, treatment with a goal of uh, making the main treatment more likely to be successful for example your uh, regular cisplatin and then the specific adjuvant really then there is a uh, if there is a relapse or a metastatic uh, setting you have the uh, 
complementary tools your uh, city uh, tissue where and then uh, then the liquid tissue tissue biopsy and your liquid biopsies here you can you are more focused here now in this particular uh, journey of uh, using the diagnostics so such uh, they will be this people this liquid biopsies will be the ones which are which will be uh, increasingly used during and uh, late see for tissue biopsies first thing usually they take it only during the time of surgeries or a ct guided biopsies but whereas liquid biopsy any time even if they come for your treatment also we can we can take the self dna take 2 ml of blood and uh, look for the typical uh, genes expressions and profiling now we look at uh, mutational signatures we've been talking about what are these exactly mutations and we really now aware that uh, single mutations can cause a change a result in a clonal expansion of uh, cells which will result in tumor uh, in addition to identifying your driver genes you know uh, cancer genomes uh, somatic mutations have been referred to as uh, uh, mutation and uh, signatures. These uh, uh, signatures mostly stromatic passenger events, they reflect the mechanism of mutations which are caused by uh, your environmental exposure to uh, mutagens or deficiency in specific DNA path pathways. Here the first approach which will use your sequencing data sets to derive and assign mutational signatures de novo first time the first approach mutational uh, depends uh, uh, signature analysis depends on having a you should need to have a sufficient number of somatic variants uh, that fit an expected uh, a pattern mutational process that lead to hypermutation generate signatures that are more likely to uh, detect uh, detected from your uh, clinical partner patterns this is like uh, we why are we talking about this precision medicine precision oncology because no two patients cancers are uh, exactly the same in major in, in many of the cancers and many of these will have uh, variable responses to uh, generic treatment such as your chemotherapy and radiation it is like uh, now your precision medicine is uh, synonymously used with similar terms like your medicine, stratified medicine, individualized medicine, tailored medicine and P4 medicine. Such wonderful terms. But this is uh, completely uh, in, term, in contrast to your traditional methods which is more of evidence based in uh, uh, medicine which, uh, which in turn is from the uh, tra traditional medicine. From your traditional medicine, you have the evidence-based medicine, then you have the stratified, personalized and your individualized. This is like how the medicine concept which is also reflective of your cancer uh, oncology, precision oncology concept. What happens here? Uh, it precision medicine uh, it includes uh, it definition itself it includes the concepts of uh, uh, both accuracy and very very precision highly precision and accurate this is the way now uh, what is accuracy it reflects your uh, degree to which the result of a given test or confirms the correct value of a uh, to a standard whereas precision it uh, refers to how close the uh, repeated measurements are to each other you need to have a very good uh, for your companion diagnostics maybe your uh, mutation signal uh, signature to be used in your companion diagnostic marker it should be very precise and accurate this is like when we use a target shooting so it is like accurate but uh, this is also suppose this is the typical cancer and how is it's an ideal situation but sometimes you have marker which is precise very very uh, precise uh, together uh, which are uh, but shots clustered together away from your center so both uh, accuracy and precision are uh, very very essential for your uh, um, uh, precision oncology for a, a good companion diagnostic um, biomarker so both genomes should be faithfully represented and the genetic stage should be reproducible this is not something which we would uh, like it should be the aim of the precision oncology first thing in to aid in therapeutics you even have uh, therapeutics as much as you have the molecular signature stratification you even have the therapeutics which we will deal in the next class where the individual characteristics are of that particular patient molecular signatures are sufficiently distinct and interventions can be concentrated on those who will uh, benefit 
and uh, those who may not suppose you have a, a negative marker or who will not and you know that drug will not be working definitely you will be sparing expense and unnecessary side effects for those who will not the first generation of your clinical types evaluating uh, uh, is is the uh, evaluating uh, the feasibility of matching is a range of treatments to specific molecular features that can be measured in an individual patient's malignancy has provided uh, some notable success as well as demonstrated certain limitations of this approach that will require improvements in pre -requel. This particular whatever therapeutic it should it should be able to demonstrate uh, it should be able to be able to measure in a um, individual patient's malignancy and it should also provide uh, that this marker should be useful in your uh, therapeutic to evaluate your therapeutic response. You have a group of patients here. So, patient phenotyping, you would do standard clinical analysis, tumor biopsy, then you do your NGS, next generation uh, profiling, and then the hostomics profiling. You have a different kind of genomic profiles. Then, what will this precision oncology do? You have each patient will have a different, isn't it? A fantastic. You are using a very good diagnosis, not only diagnosis, a very good uh, non invasive procedure. This is a very ideal scenario for uh, for a uh, clinician where uh, you can have with all this will really aid in the clinical analysis what are the examples of your precision therapy the initial effort was like uh, was to make uh, discovery of your novel therapeutics after that through how did they discover through uh, search of agents toxic against your cancer cell lines we will talk about this in the drugs drug discovery in a class next uh, next class but with the, there is an identification of specific cancer targets such as your uh, hormone receptors such as your estrogen, progesterone, androgen, um, HER2 for your breast and your VEGF receptors and others. The EGFR targeted therapy is the best example for uh, how can the targeted therapy can be magnetized. So, such as initially your EGFR targeted agents such as your uh, jefitinib were not were uh, used for all non squamer uh, lung cancer patients only uh, but they found only few of them were benefiting uh, small portion of this were pen benefiting from the treatment. Why? Because there is a realization only individuals with mutated EGFR only. This is like go back to our first class where you have your tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Only these mutated inhibitors, uh, if you have a mutated uh, EGFR only, your uh, this particular TKI inhibitors, these are called, they will be uh, aiding in the response, a better treatment. Whereas uh, those with wild type, another therapies are uh, being explored. This is your uh, example of your uh, targeted therapy where an activation of the, uh, suppose you have an EGFR mutation, it will drive cancer growth that may be uh, blocked by your EGFR inhibitor. This is the tumor cell proliferation. The, how this particular EGFR uh, inhibitor uh, or mutation in this particular receptor will cause uh, in the uh, changes in the different signaling pathways. Uh, whereas even here also, you a mutation from by BRAF, with this is mostly for your uh, thyroid. V600E uh, drives resistance against EGFR inhibits, then may be blocked by your uh, BRAF and uh, MEC inhibitors such as your Vemirafenib. Here, this is the EGFR inhibitor which will have uh, the downstream size of your RAS and then the BRAC inhibitors and the MEF, uh, MEC inhibitors. This is again a complete example of your targeted therapy. So, very very important uh, uh, slide here. Why are we talking here of this particular uh, uh, targeted therapy in precision oncology is because you are having a, pre uh, a precise diagnostic companion diagnostic uh, markers that is your EGFR, uh, EGFR uh, DNA uh, molecular profiling by using your qPCR and then uh, and then you have a specific drug. There are three aspects here. First thing the uh, what is the source issue here? Here you have even even FFP or your uh, cell free DNA from the uh, CT DNA from the blood uh, and then you have your uh, uh, the uh, then you look for the specific biomarker for, uh, by uh, uh, molecular profiling of the DNA and then you again you have a design 
drug. This is a very fantastic three chain uh, as per the model uh, which I have uh, mentioned before. This is the model which talks about you know uh, uh, personalized precision med medicine model which can even be used for your precision oncology models. Usually you have a uh, there is a key differences in the traditional model of your uh, uh, cancer first agreed, right? What are the traditional uh, general earlier methods were? General procedure for cancer treatments were like chemotherapy, radiation, surgery based on whatever stage the patient approaches the clinic. But however, this treatment's uh, efficacy is uh, very varied across individuals and also often cause harm to healthy non-cancerous uh, uh, organs and tissues. So, you have... Uh, how is the, the this is the after the diagnosis of the tumor detectors then the you have the ppm personalized uh, precision medicine uh, model which is characterized by individualized treatments and as well as individualized diagnostic approach suppose you you will have your uh, sub uh, sub tissue then metastasis like your breast the luminal and the non-luminal and then the bronze, the skin, each one will have your targeted treatments. Then you have the uh, immunotherapy. Then very, very important is your uh, omics analysis, your genomics. For uh, just imagine uh, 2001 or the uh, whole human genome project was completed. People thought it's a revolutionizing uh, uh, event for that it can benefit man, mankind in many ways. Yes, when in for the uh, this whole genome project is very very, very useful uh, for uh, the NGS applications for uh, cancer diagnostics uh, projects. The companion diagnostics can help which treatments will mostly uh, most effective for a specific cancer tumor and uh, novel cell therapies are used to target the cancer with minimal damage to healthy tissues. So, this is very very important this is like uh, you will have you should link your tumors to the effective drugs then the genetic uh, mutations like as we have did the BRCA we have seen the HER2 the EGFR and then the personal factors such as your uh, uh, environmental risk factors are also play an uh, important role in this your personalized uh, uh, personalized precision uh, model so you usually uh, usually this is the uh, despite this you know uh, even though as uh, much we are talking about still uh, it chemotherapy is the standard care, point of care uh, treatment strategy for many different cancer types and often uh, sometimes it could be the only treatment that many of the patients especially in your uh, low uh, treatment uh, setups receive this is like uh, um, sometimes you know this uh, treatment strategies could not be chemotherapy cannot be effective in many of the cancer patients what is the goal of your precision oncology you have a very uh, important uh, drug uh, you have a very important uh, uh, bi diagnostic biomarker what is the whole goal it is uh, very very important to understand the molecular mechanism of your cancer uh, formation and how that individual unique characteristics will aid in its um, in its progression or how the therapeutic response can be minimized and uh, maximized and then minimize your treatment side effects. You can have this uh, precision oncology can be used for the discovery of several novel uh, driver oncogenic paths, pathways in the tumor of an individual. Then you have expression essays to maximize uh, therapeutic response. Th this is like uh, optimize. So main the goal is to optimize your anti-cancer effect of the drugs and minimize toxicity. This is a predictive model development from your large scale omics uh, as i did as i said you have your loads of uh, uh, loads of uh, data which are uh, uh, which is uh, generated from your omics that is your transcript omics uh, your proteomics and your uh, whole gen next generation sequencing then you even have several portals such as your tcga portal then your c by portals all that you know where all these data are reposited then you have an uh, you then you have an in silico model do you define a, a functional network architecture multiplexed activity profiling then it is validated you have the component level data theory level modeling and the system level data very very importantly we use the uh, it is very important any of it to, to go through your animal models and go through clinical trials
the ppm model first step is acquiring your uh, uh, data as we have discussed like using all this particular uh, tools and then to characterize the initial uh, the individual's disease uh, state and then uh, understand uh, and application in tools in clinical trial design and treatment in the selection are important and then uh, imaging uh, cancer products such as you have your uh, organized your monoclonal antibodies cancer molecules and CAR T uh, cancer vaccines and CAR T cells are also um, uh, from the uh, uh, PPM uh, perspective then uh, you need to have uh, federal regulations for pre uh, PPM products to so as to ensure that they are safe and efficient then you need to have broader uh, consequences what are the broader consequences very very important is your economical and ethical concerns of PP, PPMR uh, have to be considered from an economic point of view this this is uh, this is uh, PPM is very difficult and then the reach can also be uh, from the ethics also uh, it, it you really have to take a uh, uh, lot of uh, precautions for by protecting the uh, privacy and of the health and the targeted uh, uh, and patients it's just not like first thing we have to be very very uh, important in this pact particularly you need to have strict laboratory sops in place several accreditations in place to really assert ascertain that this particular drug is uh, yes uh, it is or uh, this particular biomarker is wild type or mutant yes can we use this it's a very very the it is a very much onus responsibilities of all hospitals and organizations which take up this precision oncology or targeted therapy this is again similar to what i was mentioning uh, before the transcriptome genomics transcriptomics proteomics data they will be acquired metabolomics then your uh, data is stored and from the, this data you will uh, develop a ppm uh, theory where the data is processed interpreted um, and predictive model then outlook for uh, cancer peak ppm you use organize your monoclonal antibodies and then uh, you will be uh, using uh, you will be uh, regulating ppms using fdas and several all your uh, ethical organizations come here then you have uh, broader uh, consequences as i mentioned um, economic where uh, savings from uh, from uh, patients will be uh, from us uh, can how does it work with your pharma companies and the ethics so you have different definitely now agreed upon you have comprehensive diagnostics for patients with cancer so for comprehensive diagnostics for patients with uh, cancer first the characterize the genome of patients using a state of your art technologies as i mentioned all the omics then you have to filter the uh, first thing where is the tissue here for example here is your lung biopsy this could be archived biopsies can be stored for several months to years and it is like uh, they you have to after you characterize the genome of the paid tumors you know uh, the genome uh, data to through a knowledge base of existing and uh, uh, emerging anti-cancer drugs and third present an annotating uh, list to the treating oncology that can be incorporated into the you will have the after you profile this particular uh, tumor or whatever you know it should be presented to the treating oncology based on which they will really have uh, they will design the treatment uh, st uh, strategies this uh, high quality genomic information must be uh, uh, very much uh, consistently obtained in the diagnostic setting uh, and that too from uh, very old ffp blocks also you have uh, uh, category of alterations you have uh, many again you have the tier 1 fda approved drugs and many of these drugs sometimes of them are in clinical trial then you have uh, um, prognostics and then variation of uncertain significance this is a typical example how you develop preclinical tumor models for uh, use in precision oncology usually you develop mice models they are usually patient derived xenograft you use nude nude mice mostly this is how you develop preclinical 
tumor models for precision oncology. How do you do this? You have the different individuals with the, say for example, different uh, tumor, maybe just take for example, breast or a lung. The tumors are taken either from uh, surgery, during surgery or from biopsies. Then you have the blood CT, uh, blood CTCs or cell free DNA also, which can be taken. And then uh, the techniques for separating large amounts of your uh, CTCs and uh, cell free uh, tumor have been uh, have been very well uh, standardized. And then uh, and they they, rep they represent this is like they are the viable approaches for obtaining your malignant tissue for DNA sequencing and for uh, pharma. From this step, what will happen? You put this uh, tumor into the mice or then you generate organized for example lung or the breast organized which are, are just that you are uh, you are growing the tumor uh, um, in in vivo now what's happening this particular tube uh, tumor you put it you put it a patient derived xenograft you put it in the mice for example you are giving uh, say uh, the same uh, cisplatin drug to the patient and you give it to the uh, mice also this part, the tumor response to that particular uh, drug in this mice is is a uh, response or an indicative response how the tumor will survive in the patient for sometimes you know that the, the tumors will overgrow the myas then the drug is not acting on the tumor that means what will happen yes it may not there is a possibility that even in the patient also the tumor will be overgrowing it gives the minimum preclinical indication suppose you want to try novel drugs yes these are all very very important mouse models are very very important then after that you can clearly see you have your uh, you have the how the mice are uh, preclinical trials uh, modeling how the different mice are stratified here you can see the blues and the reds here now uh, it's patients derived but uh, patient derived xenografts tumor organized and conditionally uh, reprogrammed low passage tumor cultures they can be uh, either uh, uh, see even you can have tumor cultures also small bits of your tumor from here you can grow them here see can you see all this, this diagram is very small how all this growths are grow and then you can directly treat your drug in this particular uh, plates or directly on the tumor and then you can say that you can give uh, suppose I want to try a novel inhibitor along with cisplatin can I do that is it going to that I can reduce uh, suppose I want to I want to use a uh, 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 natural compound along with your tamoxifen. Can I reduce it to an amoxifen storage? Yes. Instead of directly doing cell lines is one acceptable model, but one more is your mouse models here. We will discuss. Then you have this imaging. These approaches, even in the low passage numbers itself, you can very well. So, for, for example, the tumor from here may be very small, but if I can uh, do a passage number 1, 2, then I can really uh, have a molecular uh, characterization of this particular. I can take this tumor, I can do a sequencing and then uh, drug seek screening. All this I can completely do it in this particular uh, using this uh, models and I can even do imaging also on the PDX models. So now, so as I said, is this is like a clinical, non-clinical uh, models for uh, your targets. Then you have the translational uh, research with your clinical models. Patients, uh, pa patients uh, uh, eligible for early or uh, site-specific clinical trials. So then you have the analysis You do the sequencing as I mentioned before. So patients assigned to trial based on molecular characterization. So based on the molecular characterization of this tumor, uh, maybe the tumor material could be very small to directly go for sequencing. Then that is why you put it in a mouse model. Then patient mo modeling, then uh, patient monitoring post all this, you know, the mouse. For example, as I told you, if the drug is, if the tumor is able to overgrow the drug in the mice, it's not likely it can happen even in the patient also. You have the real-time monitoring, param monitoring parameters such as your mouse. Then you can even uh, see how your uh, CTC, CECs, that all these enrichments, then tumor initiating cells can be seen. That is in the clinical uh, uh, observation. Repeated uh, tissue acquisition during therapy and the at the time of your disease uh, progression correlated with uh, clinical assessment of efficacy and toxicity. It will this will help to understand the uh, specific mechanism of your drug select sensitivity and resisting operating in each individual specific uh, individuals. Now, how do you develop a 
PPM model. The current uh, precision personalized precision model is proposed to pre precisely classify patients uh, into subgroups which share a common biological basis of uh, disease for uh, more effective uh, tailored treatment to achieve improved outcomes. So, you have your disease subtype, subtypes 1, um, then, then sub subtypes, then you have the subtype 2 and then you have the subtype 3. Tailored treatment, you have the tailored treatment for subtype 1, then for each subtype just imagine this is the very fantastic scenario. With the uh, very much increasing in progression in various uh, omics and then in your targeted uh, therapies, you know, uh, functional precision medicine models, comprehensive uh, health records and big data in the last details. They are able to di di uh, divide, it is very very important, very well uh, divided. Can you see all this, how you have the tailored treatments? Is this an imaginary line whatever we are drawing around precision medicine or can we have any different consequences? Some people definitely uh, the truest or the purest of the cancer biologists may not really uh, agree upon where it is like uh, can it be uh, how it is very important to differentiate precision medicine from your genomic medicine because or it is just not an extension of your genomic medicine. But definitely several important uh, uh, parameters like your health, uh, your uh, electronic health records. Now all hospitals we have this health electronic uh, uh, data. So, I and then telemachines, then internet, information, uh, communication technologies, they all have to be very well in place for a precision oncology to be in uh, working in. How does it this precision oncology or precision medicine, how does it work in terms of improving population and for population health or your pH? But it is not very, very, it did not happen really very relevantly in cancer. Yes, your HPV, uh, HPV uh, screening for cervical cancer, high, uh, high risk HPV screening which we have done. That is really gaining uh, momentum and but this, uh, but still it is not a very uh, lot of application in, um, uh, it's, it, this application has to be extended for other uh, cancer uh, screening protocols also. What is the path for this particular uh, precision medicine? Uh, so, many drugs have been developed to fight the disease in several ways such as uh, you know you have the inhibiting enzymes that signal the abnormal growth and survival of uh, uh, cancer cells. They, you have drugs that block your aberrant uh, uh, gene expressions uh, characteristics of cancer cells and these drugs which halt molecular signaling pathways that are overdriven cancer cells. These are all your are uh, key inhibitors. Very very important is like uh, what are the existent uh, uh, existing uh, inhibitors for in uh, oncology and the different uh, times from the 90 uh, and 70 we have the tamoxin for your uh, ER positive uh, breast cancer then you have the uh, transfusumab for HER positive, HER2 HER2 positive breast cancer and, and then uh, you have the, in the uh, this happened in 2000 and uh, but whereas in 1980 you have the uh, oncogenic DNA which is uh, isolated. This and again very then from 2000 this is when I was mentioning 2001 uh, about when the whole genomic uh, sequencing was uh, uh, completed NGS, NGS became a very important tool for your precision oncology and then you have the uh, specialized gene panels for uh, breast cancer where you can select um, examples such as your oncotype then you have the mammoprint the prosigna very very important uh, that is using your uh, nanostrings all the milestones came around this point of time for this what is the uh, different uh, drugs Okay, see where for your uh, imantinib for your uh, CML and uh, B BCRABL uh, translocations for this leukemia they have given and very very important you you even have your uh, uh, jefitinib here which was discovered for your EGFR mutant uh, non squamous cell lung carcinoma. Then you have the cetuximib the EGFR uh, mutant uh, CRC colorectal uh, cancer. Then here what uh, uh, milestone did we achieve here in this point of time? Gene specific genomics uh, sites 
where uh, you where you have your cobas 4 800 so this is a um, v500 600 mutation testing then uh, you have the cobas egfr mutation placed then um, braca analysis then uh, extended ras panels very very important we have come up with many panels around this period but at the same time the different drugs what did you have this year femirafenib you have that is your braf uh, for your braf mutant mel melanoma then uh, then uh, then you have for this particular drug then you have uh, premrolizumab for your uh, and then uh, this is all again for your ALL. This is again, you recollect we came across this for your, uh, uh, during your CART T therapy discussions. Then uh, larotrectinib, uh, the, that is for your, uh, then we have sorternib for your KRAS cancers. So 2020 different and then again the NGS based CGP panels you have where uh, you have the different uh, targets and then the particular drug well this diagram has been able to illustrate then you have the uh, select e examples like you have uh, of course you need the uh, fda approvals then the european medical association or the or whatever the different country uh, guidelines have to be given and then you have the hvs recommendations for the description of your sequence variant variants and all that this is a very very important uh, uh, diagram which predicts your uh, 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 the biomarker uh, uh, development co companion diagnostics along with your therapeutic, therapeutic uh, drugs diagnostic this is again which will uh, we will be uh, talking about this also in in detail in future where the disease uh, biology then uh, you take the sample and then sometimes you may have a uh, heart to treat uh, uh, tumor types for the samples are can be circulating analytics and then you have the multi omic prof profiling of the whole uh, tumor you can do that then you find new targets new therapeutics are continuously evolving this is a completely and how the whole next generation precision gen uh, genomics is evolving and then you have uh, access to testing and treatment then uh, again you go for your tumor heterogeneity again here and again go for your uh, profiling and then uh, data handling and it should be this whole treatment strategy should be given to uh, of all strata of people and then you counsel the patients this is the disease etiology then you have the drug development and then the uh, molecular uh, diagnostics and the cancer uh, clinical trail design the clinical trails we will all be talking in detail in the next class and the uh, treatment decisions so this is this all is lying with your uh, tumor board the hospital tumor uh, board uh, councils and then uh, you have again monitoring here <coughs> where you come across where you bring in adaptive trail design maybe should i use the old chemotherapy along with again and another uh, adjuvant uh, uh, therapy for example in the cart how we have seen you know and then uh, you have to standardization and then uh, clinical evidence of an improvement in treatment or area are there any risks associated this with this particular precision oncology maybe the drugs yes it, the patient should be aware uh, and then they, it should be done not only in one set of populations or in one set of countries it should be done in across all uh, global collaborations it should be done the precision medicine uh, definition it should not only include uh, an individual but it should be very realistic and should have impact impactful decisions and one should uh, it should be at the level of population and the uh, and the population's individuals. Even though you have genomic medicine such as um, uh, strategies such as improving your diagnostic methods, your pre, pre uh, prevent uh, your precision medicine, medicine it should uh, pre preventively care for high risk population by detecting early risk concepts such as your cervical, uh, lung, and even prostate and breast. The precision medicine should be statically, starkly differentiated uh, from your uh, uh, genomic medicine to investigate access and implement the benefits of precision medicine beyond that of your genomic medicine so that you can serve more population. How about naming it as precision population medicine or precision population oncology which could be the 
future direction where you have uh, it is love for natural first step is to um, uh, it would be to encourage an intentional change in diction used in conversations by and by clinicians that should be this precision medicine to be oncology to be should be include uh, integrated as a uh, as a normal part in the uh, when the uh, clinicians take a uh, decision for their uh, for for the therapeutic and it should be also be encouraged by the policy makers uh, to make a similar change which may be uh, more likely to be uh, to help conversations by clinicians researchers and uh, educators in the concerned field this just uh, depicts the context to explore barriers for clinical practice diagnosis you should have uh, uh, usefulness it should be uh, evident based access structure applicability and then compatibility relevance legal it should have legal implications it should it shouldn't have strength and quality of education then health organization should and from the health organizational system approach it should be provision of services it should be able to generate resources financial and administration provisions and availability of guide from the should be it's like a, a political and social interest what is a, a level of support of a disagreement and then opinion of colleagues by when there is a, how can it uh, if there is a disagreement maybe if there is a test disparities or uh, if there is like a uh, disparities in the term of mutual trust level of communication these are all very very important contests or contents of course with other uh, oncology practice also is important but with precision oncology it is all the more because you are having uh, various parameters to screen and various drugs to uh, give so it is very very important so from the health uh, professional comfort uh, context they should be really competent enough skill knowledge and uh, very well from the patient uh, uh, contest to make it all in the, he is the most center part here it should be fulfillment of treatment then doctor patient relationships needs they need to have the awareness of the disease attitude and they should be motivated what could be the challenges for precision Mm, uh, oncology so it's a relatively a new disease prevention and therapy therapy method with a valuable ability to uh, consider and integrate your varying uh, genetic environmental and social factors but public health funding especially in scenarios like in india it is it has to be devoted to the current advance in your precision oncology such as for example you need to have your ngs sequencing how much does it cost one panel so for a lung panel or for your or colon panel so it would cost 1 lakh per test because uh, your maintenance charge for the main, uh, instrument everything is quite expensive how do we how does you uh, have the public health funding what can be devoted for this particular field yes it is a debatable topic and then not only for uh, testing even you need to have counseling also so you need to have even your uh, paramedical workers or even the real, who are all completely aware of this precision uh, oncology or the precision medicine uh, so uh, always this whole field has been continuously questioned to determine its utility it's not necessary that maybe i have given an egfr tki inhibitor to a egfr positive individual yes he will have a better outcome not necessary it it as always with the cancer being the uh, the aggressiveness of the disease yes there is a very high chance uh, even that could also be a failure then do you how do you have the uh, how do you really uh, support with such because uh, once you have a novel drug definitely there is a chance that the uh, that particular uh, tumor could become even resistant to this particular drug now for how is uh, uh, how does it uh, criti how does it really imp uh, aid in improving your health improvement yes this is something which uh, which is a real challenge for uh, precision uh, oncology of course uh, for cancer uh, tumor per se also then uh, we, and uh, this uh, pr critics primary concern can this yield health improvements for the general population as i mentioned can can it really uh, have it's it's no it's no longer like even uh, ppm also it is like should be up for population health also and uh, uh, can uh, can this be uh, used for your uh, towards allocated towards conventional public health measures
So we have come to the end of this particular uh, session and where uh, we have really uh, dwelled into the complete uh, uh, complete definitions and exactly what is precision oncology. Maybe given the title of the course, it should be like maybe we take the session first. But because we have handled uh, the basics, the complete detection methods, everything in detail, we, I, I thought this would be a right thing to make it now at this juncture where you are in may, midway, midway so that the further targeted therapy whatever we have designed for this course will be very useful and helpful in understanding. So, in the next class we will be talking about the drug discovery process in precision oncology. We will talk about the different clinical the non-clinical models that are uh, adapted and the different types of the clinical trials which people uh, which uh, several uh, researchers used for the uh, for uh, identification or for the of this uh, targeted therapeutic drugs. Thank you.